What's up ladies and gentlemen, Missaboy here bringing you my current most efficient method of making golden warlords of Draenor patch 6.2, so get your popcorn and listen closely. Aside the main gold making item, I'll be telling you what you can do as an extra to get even more money in your pocket, but first I'd like to present to you my garrison setup on my main character so you will understand what I'll be showing you in a couple of moments. My character uses mining and jewel crafting as primary professions, the rest don't matter. My garrison includes A level 3 barracks, useful for farming follower missions and rewards. A level 3 war mill, useful for mythic drops within raids or dungeons. A level 3 trading post, useful for a couple of other gold making methods. Check my other videos about uh, Universal Language Module or the Rylak Egg Flip for more information. Links in the description. A level 3 jewel crafting building, this one gives me a guaranteed 200 to 300 gold in a daily, also boosts my Talalite crystal income. A level 2 soon to become level 3 salvage yard, this building is useful for sometimes giving you crafting materials, follower upgrades or even transmog greens from opening salvage received from successful follower missions. More info on how you can make gold with this building in a future video. A level 3 enchanter study, useful for creating your own enchants and also disenchanting all your useless gear into temporal crystals which you then sell on the auction house. A level 3 herb garden, useful for keeping my herb count moderate so I can trade with a trading post whenever I need garrison resources. A level 3 mine, useful for keeping my true iron ore and black rock ore stock high. And finally, a level 3 Frostwolf Tavern, useful for recruiting followers with the Treasure Hunter trait, thus giving you a lot more gold from your treasure hunting follower missions. And of course, a shipyard, to be able to get different resources. This method focuses on crafting one of the epic gems from patch 6.2. There are 6 different epic gems which focus on versatility, critical strike, haste, mastery, multi-strike and stamina. On most servers, including mine, Draenor, the most expensive one seems to be Immaculate Haste Taladite, which ranges from 6,000 gold to 12,000 gold on the auction house. Then again, I might be wrong, so I urge you to take a quick look at your server's economy and see which gem is the most expensive. To be able to craft these gems, your character needs to have at least 600 points in jewel crafting and to be level 100. Once these two requirements have been met, a quest will be unlocked in your garrison from Gazlar or if you're alliance from Barra, select Stone Cold Gems of the Apexis. Go ahead and complete a small chain of quests and at the end you will be rewarded with a friendly NPC that will be able to craft the gems for you. He is located to the opposite of the Flightmaster at Akhtar's Rise in Northwestern Tanan Jungle. You will notice, however, that you can only craft versatility gem for now. This is because you need to unlock the other recipes with modules that can drop from various locations. Also, to be able to effectively have enough Taladai crystals for the gem, you need to buy the primal gem cutting recipe from your ore trader in your garrison. The critical strike module drops from Shadow Lore Iskar in Hellfire Citadel. The haste module drops from High Sage Virix in Skyreach Mythic. The mastery module is sold by Quackenbush or Paul North for 800 gold and it requires a rank 6 within the Brawler's Guild. The multi-strike module is sold by the Arakor Apexis traders in Stormshield or Warspear for 3000 gold and 3000 Apexis crystals. The stamina module drops from the world boss Rukmar located in Spires of Iraq. Once you got your desired gem module and made the NPC learn it, it's time to focus on making the real DAO, aka the money. I start off by completing my follower missions for the day and starting the others. I'm using the master plan add-on to make this as quick as possible. Focus on gold rewarding missions, primal spirits, sorceress air or garrison resources. After that I go and reap the rewards of my herb garden and mines. With the mats collected I go and refill the work orders for herbs and ores. Then I check the daily trader inside the main garrison building. There are five traders you need to look out for. The fur trader which will trade primal spirits for sumptuous fur. The herb trader which will trade them for talader orchids. The ore trader which will trade them for true iron ore. The leather trader which will trade them for raw beast hides. Or the dust trader which will trade them for drainic dust. It is very important once you receive any of these 5 traders in your garrison to take full advantage of them and buy as many primal spirits as you can, you will need them later. Also you can buy the primal gem cutting from the ore trader in your garrison. 
After that I take care of my other work orders, trading post where I refill the orders only if I need some garrison resources for my missions, jewel crafter where I complete the daily quests and refill the work orders for more tile like crystals, also make sure to have a max level follower stationed at the jewel crafting building to double your tile like crystals income. Also try to use your jewel crafting ability every day to craft 20 dull talodite crystals at 700 skill points. The enchanter to get more temporal crystals which I sell on the auction house later. And finally I check the tavern for any new quests and the shipyard for primal spirit or sorcerer's air missions. Also please note that you need to buy the respective blue gem recipe from the jewel crafting vendor in your garrison or city. You need 5 secret of Draenor jewel crafting which are easily made once per day. So if you want to sell epic uh, haste gems you would need the recipe for a greater haste taladite to make things smoother. Now that I'm done with my garrison I move on to the city where I immediately go to the auction house and refill my black rock ore and true iron ore stock with 2 stacks of 200 each. They are pretty cheap on Draenor but then again might be wrong so better go and check than to be sorry. You don't need that many to craft an epic gem but I craft more than one per day. Now you have what you need to craft the respective blue variant of the epic gem you want to cut. So go ahead and do it. You can do it more than once if you have the resources for it. You will need the green gem first too which is really cheap, then 10 sorcerer's air and 50 talodite crystals. If you don't have enough sorcerer's air just buy it from the auction house and if you don't have 50 talodite crystals use your ore and primal spirits to craft more using primal gem cutting. Now that you have your blue gems it's time to visit Tanan jungle once again. When I arrive in Tanan jungle I usually do all the daily quests. The Daily Assault, the Saber Stalker quest, the Blood of Chick quest, the Arakor daily and also the two other dailies that come right after the main assault has been completed. This gives me more Primal Spirit, Apexis Crystals, Raw Materials and also opportunities to farm deposits, herbs or skin animals which all will have a chance to give you Fell Blight, an item needed to craft the epic gem. If you haven't done it for the week, you can go ahead and kill Lord Kazak as it will give you a hefty amount of Felblight. Also try and kill all the rares you come across. Now you are ready to visit the gem cutter and craft your epic gem. All epic gems are crafted the same, you need a blue respective gem, 100 Talodite crystals and 10 Felblight. You should have the blue gems from earlier and at least 10 Felblight from Kazak or from all resources on Tanan that you have farmed while doing dailies. If you don't have 100 crystals, just use primal gem cutting to get them. Once you got it, go ahead and sell it on the auction house for the most amount of gold you can get and there you go. It may seem like a grandiose thing or time consuming but once you get in your everyday WoW routine it becomes really really easy. On low population servers this will grant you 10,000 gold in a snap of your fingers. With only about a thousand consumed on AH or, or Sorceress Air since most people craft two or three gems at one time. Well this is it for this gold guide, hope you guys enjoyed and uh, yeah you can consider it as my daily gold routine as well. Well if you have any questions leave them in the comments, subscribe if you haven't already for more gold making videos and I'll see you guys later, bye.